just quieting down, baby. For, for, for capita export value. Library. Chris, are you embarrassed by your behavior today? There's, there's a lot of bleeding hearts around. Do you have the fortitude or the gonads to stand up and come across here and say that to me, you son of a bitch? Hey, hey, hey. Just watch me. He certainly went too far, Mr. Speaker, when he st- I saw him stick his tongue out. Contemptuous disregard. More than a slab of bacon talking here. The disappointment you also feel is my responsibility. I lost my temper. What is the nature of your thought? The word was F-A-R-T. Uh, hello and welcome to Canadian Politics is Boring. My name is Rhys Waters and with me is the indelible Jesse Harley. Ooh, indelible. I'm going to indelible. What does that mean? Does, I can't remember. I just, you get indelible, indelible ink. What does that mean? Making marks that cannot be removed. Oh that God. sounds like that's me. Sure. <laughs> Not even to be once, forgotten. Once he enters the room, no one can forget. <laughs> even if they want that's to. That's what I mean. Like, yeah. <laughs> so here you go, everybody. This is a, this is Jesse's uh, bubbly, poor a, excuse uh, for ASMR. Blackberry bubbly. Are you done? Can we move on? Oh, hold on, I have a bag, a leather bag with a zipper. Woo-hoo. Great. Can we move on now? Um. Oh, look, some paper. I'm still ready to move on. Uh, Jesse, you, you've been late because you're too busy at the at the gym pretending to work out and watching butts jiggle, and now we're late. That's right. That's that's the only reason I I signed up for uh, the gym was to watch butts jiggle. I know any butt, any yeah. butt, <laughs> regardless of age or anything or well, firmness. He's into it. Yep. Just just he's give me good. those butts, Jesse. I, I got a speak pipe for you. Okay, let's so, hear it. Bring it. Hear the speak pipe. This is this is miraculous. Is this a new speak pipe or this speaker a new, from like five months pipe. ago? New speak pipe. Okay, this is. Hey guys, this. I'm Jess from uh, British Columbia. I'm kind of listener, first time caller, first message, labor, whatever. Um, so Jesse, you mentioned uh, during the Winnebago, Wendigo, whatever, whatever goer episode that um, you didn't know if cannibalism was illegal in Canada. Here's some fun fact. Cannibalism itself technically isn't illegal. What is illegal is murder and the gross desecration of a human body. So I uh, hope that clears some stuff up for you and uh, have a spooky polar bear. They have a spooky polar bear. I don't know. It was one of the loudest environments anyone's ever recorded to speak pipe. I did hear music and I think and children, children in the yeah, background. Yeah, and pets. Um, uh, so thank you so much for leaving that speak pipe. Did she leave a name? Jess. Jess, thank you for leaving Jess, the speak pipe. just so like you, me. It's not illegal to eat. To cannibalism is illegal, but desecration of a body and... Uh, oh, shit. Uh, so desecration of a yeah. body and um, a murder. Ah, so I don't know how you get around that as a cannibal. That's what I'm wondering. Like, how do you eat a body without it counting as desecration? Well, I know. I mean, if they had loop, if they had like a, a team of amazing lawyers, like a corporation looking for tax and regulation loopholes, I'm so, sure they could. Uh, they're Kenny Hotz from Kenny versus Spenny. He did this. He had his own uh, separate show from Kenny versus Spenny. Did this. Are you familiar with Kenny versus Spenny? Yeah, you've talked you about Kenny be. versus Spenny before. Yeah, yeah you've yeah. never seen it. I oh my god, it's your style it. of humor. I haven't watched it, but no. Uh, you've Dude, it's the funniest show before. It's the you have to you specifically have to watch it. Okay. It's hilarious. It's Nobody very else. funny, and it's like your style of gross humor. Everybody right? else like, ignore. Everybody else ignore this. This is just a recommendation for me. <laughs> but Spenny, uh, Kenny Hotz started a second show called Triumph of the Will. Um, he was kind what, of what do you call it? Hitler Triumph of the Will. Triumph. Triumph of the Will. Yeah. Jesus, like little Lenny like, Riefen style Nazi propaganda movie. That's correct. Yes. He's got a thing with Hitler. I don't really know why. Uh, so like he's yeah, but his, his whole show was like, let's see if I can wheel myself to do things. Final solution. <laughs> Is that a second book? Is that? Is, I, no, that's just what he called the Holocaust. Oh my God. That's horrifying. Okay. So anyway, we're going off track. Uh, it was all about like him just using willpower to do stuff. And um, one of the episodes was he was going to become uh, a like, I don't think it was the entire episode. I think it might have been. He was going to become a cannibal. 
he was going to become a cannibal with but so but he found loopholes around it like he got a woman's permission after she gave birth to eat the placenta well some cultures, technically do, some cultures do that yes but that is technically cannibalism i mean when i cut my you know, finger as I, is I, eating I like so I'd, yeah, that's he, he technically cannibalism. So he he be, technically became a cannibal in that instant. He fried and cooked and ate on camera a placenta. It was gross, but uh, I think he also ate like toenails and like some dead skin shape. It was really disgusting. But he did it, and he like he's like at the end of the episode, he's like, "Yay, look at me! I'm, I'm fucking I'm a cannibal now." I'm Are, like actually a cannibal. So I it's really don't fancy really this show. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, that's a different show. A man that's a different show. Don't don't watch Triumph of the Will. Watch Kenny versus Spenny, where they, where a man they uh, have a competition to eat. Yeah, the, eat. <laughs> it's a bit weird. Anyway. Um, also, I, I, yeah, I have you a, don't have to watch that one. That's fine. And maybe maybe I'll do Kenny versus Betty. But um, I've got uh, another video. Um, okay. I, I want to introduce. This is something I saw on the internet last weekend. And I did post it on our socials. And not everyone saw it. But I wanted to add some extra commentary on you about how stupid. You know, politics is stupid sometimes. And, the, and politicians say stupid things. And you just go, no one's going to like listen what? to that and go this makes so much sense i don't know if you saw this on our social media jesse what are you talking about politicians can say stupid things? they say stupid things that don't make any sense but they're trying to what get are an you? emotional reaction <sighs> that's watch, watch this. Watch this. I, I don't think that's true what's up yeah we just enjoyed some incredible freedom right here on the Soyuz racetrack so Pierre Polyev drives a race car around a racetrack and then says, I just enjoyed some incredible freedom on this racetrack. <laughs> that is a stupid thing to say. Play it again. Okay. What's up? Yeah. We just enjoyed some incredible freedom right here on the Soyuz racetrack. That's literally it. What a fucking, what a dingus, man. I'm going to enjoy some incredible freedom drinking a bubbly. Well, that was the thing. The tag I put on there was, I'm going to enjoy, how do you enjoy your incredible freedom? Driving on a racetrack, <laughs> burning leaves, or participating in an orgy. Like, incredible freedom. Please I can't leave believe this guy's probably going to be the next prime minister. Like, seriously, I mean, it's, the thing it's is, disturbing I don't on so he, many levels. He doesn't even buy into what he's saying. But he, <laughs> of but course I, not. I don't... <laughs> I, I've lived in Canada for five and a half years now. Canadians are sensible people who tend to not like people who, uh, who are full of shit. Um, yet he's super popular, and I can't explain why. Especially when he says stuff like that. Ninety-nine percent of the Canadians I've met would look at that clip and go, "What is he in the wrong? Is he is he fallen south of the border? And is he? Do you know what I mean? It sounds is a very American kind of thing to say." Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's insane. Like He's like insane. a Republican American thing to say. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Um, is that uh, is this what the show's about? Well, I can talk about that for the next forty minutes for no, sure. No, no, it's not. It's not. I just, I just, <laughs> it just, made, it made me really angry because I don't like it when politicians treat people like idiots and say stupid That's shit. All politicians, all of them. I know every single one of them. <laughs> which is why I'm continually angry. <laughs> That's how we describe race: the continually angry Welshman. Yeah. Um, Continuously. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Continuously angry Welshman. Anyway, so, do you think uh, is he going to be the next prime minister? Is that what it's looking like? If there's an election tomorrow, that's what it looks like. Millennials love him, Fuck. as we as we covered before. So, oh yeah, right. Although we <laughs> can all look forward, we can all look forward to the incredible freedom that he's going to bring. I can't us. wait for my incredible freedom. Thanks, Polyev, for my incredible freedom that you're going to bring me. You're right now, my freedom is only so so. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's, uh, it's out okay. Of 10, out of ten, is like four and a half but right if it was incredible yeah. if it was incredible like like he showed in that video imagine if your freedom was up to a rating of 10 as soon as he gets into parliament he's just gonna like get on live tv and start pointing at a live audience like you get a race car you get a race car you get a race car we all get race cars incredible I mean, freedom but they should be like they used to have the um <laughs> The, the terrorist threat level. It was like kind of, and what they should do is change that every day to depend on the level of freedom we're experiencing. So like from, like that from day, that average day, the, to the incredible. Chart, <laughs> no, from, from like, 
from shitty <laughs> to average to <laughs> shitty to average to upper mild to incredible freedom like a chart you move on like what's the what's the freedom on that freedom level today that day on the track was incredible but some days freedom's gonna feel shitty so it's important oh, to measure these funny. nonsensical piles of diarrhea <laughs> You really are upset. I am upset. <laughs> He's spoon feeding his followers warm diarrhea and they're smiling as he does it. But uh, <laughs> I mean, true, don't forget, that was, true does yeah. it as well, but he does it he does it with uh, with a smile. Falling downstairs in a black face. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> you know, <it's>, that's all. <laughs> and then everybody else, all the all the all the people in the middle who are reasonable have just got to go, well, do I hold my nose to this one or that one? Who are you going to choose? It's, it's funny, like, it's around this time where all the liberal parties, you know, the Green Party, the Liberal Party, the NDP, they all, like, want to get in on there, get their own slice of things, so they, div- it's it just becomes so divisive. It becomes so divisive, and all the liberals, all the people who would normally vote on the left, they're divided. And this is where the right is not divided, and the right just sweeps in and does. They can say whatever the fuck they want right now, as long as the, all the left sides are divided they can drive amongst a three or four parties. Camaro. Yeah, they can drive yeah. a souped up Camaro on a racetrack <laughs> saying stupid shit. And everyone's like, oh my God, I love it. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway warm diary. Anyway, um, incredible freedom. This episode, should we talk about should we do a content? We've been 10 minutes in of a speak pipe. And oh, we've different, different content. Yeah, it was great. It was good stuff. Let's do new I content. I can talk about po- so, Perrier, Perrier Polyev. All Perrier Perrier Polyev. It's a new flavor. <laughs> it tastes, like, it tastes like diarrhea. Anyway. Um, <laughs> um, so, uh, Carbonated diarrhea. <laughs> That's disgusting. Oh my God. <laughs> if anyone's got a soda I'm stream, I'm so at proud home, of that. Try really. It. <laughs> Ew! Fucking gross. Let us know how it went. <laughs> Please do not <laughs> leave us a speak pipe. Absolutely do not. Well, I'll send me a can. We'll do some ASMR like Jesse does. Oh, <laughs> anyway, it could make me burp, and it was my idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> my joke. Change, change okay. of pace. This is a historical story. It's it's Canada's last segregated school. That's not a change of pace. We've been doing historical stories for three years. Uh, I mean, from the the last 10 minutes. Oh, okay. I'm not talking about the gear change historically across the rest of this show's life. Um, what did you so, What did you call it? What was Canada's your last segregated school. So did did you oh, know that Canada... Fun. Did you know Did you know Canada had segregation? I mean, I didn't know, no, but it doesn't surprise me. So... I just assumed everywhere had segregation for a very long time. It wasn't like the same as like the southern states in the U.S., but they, at times it was at the same time. So obviously, um, the well, obviously, I didn't know this until I read it. Obviously, now that I know this, uh, previously I didn't. So Canada's military was segregated uh, and had an all-black battalion in like 1916 during World War One, and the armed forces wouldn't let any black volunteers join until 1939. Um, so it's again, hold on. <clears throat> You're saying that people have been trying to dodge the draft, avoid going to war for years, and and African Americans were not allowed to join? No. And this was a problem. Like well, yeah, people because didn't, people, like, from what I understand, people didn't want to go to war and there was a whole like there was no, but, but, but at the time, everyone was being told this is like the, this is a call up for of the generation to kind of like save the world. Um, but I mean, I guess there were different mentalities. I think, I think barring black people from doing anything that everyone else can do is always a problem. You know, regardless of whether you believe going to war is good or not, you have the you should I have suppose, the right yeah. to make that yeah, choice. All right, fair, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I just I I, su- I made the assumption that like the vast majority of people during World War II did not want to go and die horrifically for, you know, that was just my assumption, but maybe I think most people did go I'm wrong about most things. Yeah. 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 You obviously you would have, uh, you wouldn't have gone and fought for your freedoms. Incredible. Freedoms. I absolutely would not have for my incredible freedoms. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the, um, so the, um, <clears throat> Nova Scotia, the province that you have lived a large portion of your life in and that I've settled in, was is considered kind of one of the most segregated or had the worst kind of segregation in Canada. In Nova Scotia? Yes. So That's the 48, depressing. 
the, the, the individual 48 black communities in Nova Scotia, historical black communities, were typically geographically segregated from the other towns and cities on purpose from from the start um and even like if, you know you must know viola desmond mm-hmm. um obviously she 1946 she was arrested for sitting in the whites only section of a movie theater in in nova scotia amazing arrested um, and there were there were things like housing and apartment rental were segregated, orphanages were segregated, hospitals could refuse black physicians and patri- patients, and cemeteries, including one in um, in Nova Scotia as well, could deny bar- burial rights for black people. They wanted to segregate um, them essentially. Uh, the 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 lengths at which human beings will go to to secure their place as uh, a true asshole. Is- yeah, exactly. It never to ceases most, to amaze me. It wants to be the most premium asshole in the world. Um, so anyway, the, the, so several provinces, Ontario, Quebec, and Nova Scotia, had segregated schools, which is kind of what we're talking about today. Um, okay. And it, was, it wasn't until they kind of passed the 1977, 1977, which wasn't that long ago, Human Rights Act, a Canadian Human Rights Act, that they ended segregation in schools. However... The last segregated school in Canada hung on in Nova Scotia until 1983. Say that again. The last segregated school in Canada closed its doors in 1983. <clears throat> they closed its doors, but did, were they operating as a segregated school in 1982? Yes. <clears throat> Okay, so the school, so I just wanted to confirm, like you said, the school closed, but they were still operating as a segregated school up until the very point of them closing. Yes. yes. That's insane. That's Night insane. So just, just to put this in perspective, 1983, it was a year before I was born, so it wasn't long ago. I'm incredibly young. Um, and also, <laughs> it's, the, it's the year that, like, National Lampoons, that's the year that came out, Scarface, Risky Business. Um, there's a bunch, it's, you know, it's not that long ago. <laughs> Where was the school? So, Lincolnville in Guysborough County in Nova Scotia. Wow. So, wow. so Lincolnville was, uh, was and still is a predominantly African uh, Nova Scotian community is in Guysborough County. And essentially it was settled by freed black slaves in 1784. And the, the town is named after President Abraham Lincoln, who obviously freed the, freed the slaves. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, I'm going to try to get ahead of you here. So it's it's it was a predominantly African American community. African and the Canadian. school, African Canadian. Well, African American is referencing to like North America, which Canada is a part of. Oh, okay, but, okay, okay, that makes sense. No one says it apart from you, but fine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could say African Canadian. Uh, and this school is uh, was established by African Canadians. Yes, is that what you're saying? Well, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Well, so, so, so this is what I wanted to see if I'm getting ahead of you. So are we talking about like a predominantly black community with a school that was, was settled by the black community? And so the segregation is really segregating the whites? <laughs> like you guys get to sit in the back for the first time? No, 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 <laughs> is that what's it. happening? No, no, let me get to it because like it comes down to like zoning and the, the white kind of people drawing the boundaries on who gets to go where. Okay, <clears throat> so I was really, um, I was really kind of hoping there'd be some comeuppance here for, you know, like no, no, you guys get to sit in the back, way in the back this time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Just flip it. Just flip it. You you get the day old cafeteria food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. So so what happened was they was they were settled three thousand acres, but apparently the the nice land that they settled on they were then driven from and f- moved further inland by the white population and they were forced to squat on like a rocky barren land which is now where the community oh, sits today oh, hold on this was in because this also happened in in halifax this, Actually, happened, they, this happened all over nova scotia i, I, I read about this where they're like like black communities were given rocky terrain to farm with that was u- practically useless you can't grow shit yes, in this yeah, yeah. right or when they were given good yeah. land they were pushed off by a kind of the white people who didn't mm-hmm. want them to have it so so it's kind of it's a really small community even like 30 years ago there were 300 people there apparently there's like less than 100 now because a lot is mainly seniors as well a lot of the young people have left 
Um, but apparently, in, in 1836, um, Nova Scotia, uh, the province, uh, the government essentially said um, they wanted to establish separate schools for blacks or people of color, was as the wording was in the legislation. So in 1870, the Halifax City Council enacted a bylaw to exclude students of African descent from the school system. Wow. So what happened was the the first school in Lincolnville was obviously would have been in people's homes because it was a small rural community. So if you wanted kids to have an education, they would have just ad hoc done it themselves. Homeschooling, but without wanting to do it or being privileged enough to have the time and money to do it, if you know what I mean. Right. And then... In 1941, they actually built a school, and it was a one room that consisted of a stove in the center of the floor, which provided energy and heat to the entire room. Um, I, always thought, I always thought that was kind of cute when I saw photos of one's one room schoolhouses with a tiny little stove in it. I was like, it's just kind of adorable. It it, it does sound adorable. I wouldn't say it's a. I mean, there was no like. This didn't sound like a good place to learn. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I mean, like it wasn't from what I understand, that was kind of the norm for a very long time everywhere, wasn't it? Um, I guess so. But when you've got when they were building other schools that didn't have that, that were modern with heating systems. Um, oh, oh, I see. Like if there was we didn't feel as cute. Like, no, no, I, I see what you're saying. Like, I thought that was just how schools were built for a very long time. But like, if there no, were no, alternative, was... much better, more advanced <laughs> systems available, then yes, sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what happened was so the black, so black students in the area continued to be, were still barred from attending public schools in the, until the 60s. And as late as 1959, school buses just wouldn't stop to pick them up in their neighborhoods. Oh, my God. Um, and there would be seven formal black school districts and uh, an additional and three additional exclusively black schools in Nova Scotia. So uh, in 1965, a consolidated school was constructed in, in Lincolnville, which was um, designed to encompass. So they built a new school, essentially, in the 60s. The law times are changing. We need to build them a school. So what they did was they built a school, but they um, – because – all of the African Nova Scotian people lived in one community and the white people lived in separate communities with very little intermingling. They essentially drew the boundaries to make sure that the school was se segregated. And Jesus. it was only a school for the for black kids. Oh my God. <laughs> um, and then that's what, that's what happened then. They, they, it, it, it operated for nearly um, 20 years as a segregated black school until it was officially closed down and... Um, uh, the kids from that school were integrated into the wider school system around them in 1983, which is ridiculous. Amazing. That is ridiculous. That's amazing. But, but the crazy thing is, that's not the only shit that um, Lincolnville had to deal with. Oh, good. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> So not, not only was it home to Canada's like last segregated school ever, it, that it also the um, can, can you guess what happened to that community as well? Um, any guesses what the government might have done to that community to make it like when are we party? talking eight eighties or like what decade? I'm talking, I'm talking um, probably when was it? Because um, depending on the decade. Well, yeah, it would have been it would have been about um, probably the last forty years, and is ongoing now today. <clears throat> oh, ongoing! The government is doing something to that community for the past forty years, and and is still doing still it. doing it. Yeah, can I get a hint without giving it away? It involves environmental racism. Environmental racism. Environmental racism. Do you want me to help? Okay, do you want me to just tell you? You tell no, yourself no. in knots. <laughs> no, this is, I've never heard that term before in my environmental racism. Um, do you want me to give you a little example of environmental racism? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll give you an example for the, for the, for the, this actual Is the example one. going to be the answer? You're just going to tell me? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll just tell you. I'll just tell you. So environmental <laughs> okay. racism in this case is Lincolnville. The, the 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 one of the one of the forty eight historic black communities 
the government decides <clears throat> we need to build a landfill. Where should we put this landfill? No fucking way. I oh know. my god. Uh, let's put it <sighs> one kilometer from Lincolnville because oh um, my god, we won't listen to the them. Worst. Um, so <laughs> fucking so, hell, man. So that's been there for that's been there for a long time. I think it's been there since like the fifties, um, and essentially seventeen different municipalities. Um, uh, oh no, sorry, that that was the, the original one. Then they built a second um, generation one more recently. So this was in the early two thousands. They built a second landfill there, uh, which takes waste from seventeen municipalities across Nova Scotia. Wow! Wow! But this wow. isn't. That's this is that's amazing. This isn't, this isn't unique though to Lincolnville. Um, a 2002 study found that 30 percent of African Nova Scotians live within five kilometers of a dump. They seem to just build the dumps close to the historic black communities in Nova Scotia. You're shitting me? No, like one Fuck third me. of. Oh, <laughs> it's just, just insane. insane. You know what these communities need. They need Pierre Polyev as their leader to bring them incredible they, they just, freedom. They just lack distinct, incredible freedom. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so um, James Desmond, one of the residents, has got to say, and he says, waste and race go hand in hand, essentially in Nova Scotia, where, um, yeah. I wonder if there's the, uh, any relation. Waste, waste to- and race. Well, no, it wasn't uh, to Viola. Oh, Desmond. Desmond. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of what you find is there's some very distinct last names amongst Nova Scotian, uh, the Nova Scotia community. And my friend, Eddie Carvery III, there's the Carveries are an established family from um, Africa. I'm sorry. Hold on. I have to stop you. You have a friend whose last name is the third? Eddie Carvery. He's the third Eddie Carvery. That's his name. And his son is Eddie Carvery IV. It's like a family tradition. No fucking way. Yeah, his That's dad, amazing. His, his, uh, his dad is called Eddie Carvery the second, and his grandfather, Eddie Carvery, is the guy who was like one of the longest held the, one of the longest protests in Canadian history um, in Africville. Is he alive? Can we get him on the show? He is alive. I don't think he, I don't he, he's, had, he's had some health issues recently, but he's um he's a he's an incredibly powerful speaker. Wow. Okay. Holy shit. Yeah, you did a, a whole podcast on <laughs> Africa, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was just thinking, like, you know a lot about, actually, about actually, this community. It's such a whole podcast about environmental racism. So, <laughs> so essentially, wow. the, and what, so they've opened this second dump in the 2000, like 20 years ago. They had the second dump open, and they're planning on using it for at least 45 years. So it's going to be there for another 25 years, roughly. I'm I'm wondering, and this is me playing devil's advocate as I like to do. Um, I'm wondering, obviously, when the dump started, it was clear racism when they were like, where can we put this dump? We'll put it here. But in order to put the dump there, they need to own a certain amount of land to do it. So they did it. And then I'm wondering if that was the racist sort of move cut to 40 years later, you know, where it's a whole new set of people running a set of companies or, you know, establish or whatever. And then they're like, let's just continue putting dumps next to where we have dumps currently. And it's not like a racist propelled move. You know what I mean? It's more like a business. Like, where do we have dumps? Okay. That's where we put dumps sort of thing. Like it started with yeah. racism. Yeah. Is it maybe not continuing with racism? You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm just, I, I'm, I mean, I, I know, but at the same time, like, Okay, well, I'll put it in, the, put it in this context. There's a, there's a possible link between contaminants and high rates of cancer and asthma and other illnesses in the community. That's horrible. Um, and also there's a psychological and social impact because you have bad smells, you have bird waste, increased traffic, um, bears, raccoons, skunks because of the waste. Um, and also um, in hazardous methods are used there to to dispose of things but also the 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 impact it has on your community you know there's the landfill community it doesn't there's no like oh no i'm not with tourism and things no, so no, i think if, you misunderstand i'm not arguing in favor of landfills <laughs> I think but, landfills but, but, are but, horrible but my, is, you said, <laughs> but my point is that so if if a new government comes in and goes this landfill historically was built one kilometer from this community it will be 30% cheaper to keep just open one another one there 
Um, mm. It's like if if they if they rebuild. That's, they that's build, basically my my argument is that like they the people who are in charge now are probably being influenced by greed. Uh, like yes, yeah, by yeah, money exactly. and cheapness and greed and, and not like driven by pure racism. Like we must put it in this no, community no, exactly. specifically. It's just like, we're going to say, but, but, you know. but if a road is dangerous, then they might completely mm-hmm. change the shape or the direction of that road or rebuild the road because people keep dying on it. So if, if, if someone's, you know, done this and built a landfill next to this kind mm-hmm. of community, then is within the government's like power to go, do you know what? We're going to close this. We're going to re-landscape the land. We're going to seal it all off. We're going to treat the environmental issues and we'll find are you, somewhere else to do it. Are are you asking our government to, <laughs> to think about other people instead of themselves? This is, I need to write this down. That's a good idea, Reese. Oh, Think that, about that other of, people. Is da- don't, it's a dangerous idea. Just try and forget. Everyone try and forget it. Okay. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, I, I, so Lincolnville, I want to go to Lincolnville. It's, a, it's only there a, a, an hour or so drive away. So I, I want to go we check do it a road out. trip. We should we do, do a road trip. trip. Yeah. And there, was a, there was there was a thought, uh, something that I heard a long time ago about uh, landfills and what some communities are choosing to do with it, which is they, because like, you can't recycle everything. In fact, I read something. Or I saw a, a video recently. I don't know if it's true or not about how uh, there's a myth behind recycling plastics and you can only really re- recycle 10% of plastics that everyone is putting into the recycling bin. And so the 90% okay. of recycled plastics are just going into a fucking landfill and the oil and gas companies are the ones that have promoted recycling plastic the most to make us think that the plastic problem is now in our hands and not theirs. And it's like, it sounds like a conspiracy theory. I don't know, but like it could also be very true because those companies are incredibly evil. Anyway, cut to yeah. landfills, which are, we don't have a great solution for these things. Obviously recycling isn't working great. Uh, burning them, horrible idea. So some, someone came up with a grand idea of like creating this giant hole in the ground, filling it with concrete, putting all the trash, massive amounts of trash uh, into this hole, compacting it, filling it with more concrete and then building a giant park around it on over top of it. And apparently like it'll stay down there and kind of compost over millions of years without actually damaging the environment around it. And now you've got the money because you've basically bought and garbage off of you know municipalities who will gladly let you take it off their hands for you know some money and now you've got money to build a park and so I'm like i just i love well do you know what i i grew up in like a subdivision or houses estate as you call it in the uk that was built on a former landfill site right exactly yeah was um, the garbage still there like, or like buried underground no well yeah it was it was buried underground and we had like there was a football pitch and a rugby field and a playground and houses all built on top of it so they buried it down but the weird thing was Hmm. even and i don't know if it still happens now when i was a kid like decades after the landfill was long gone seagulls still came back and landed everywhere even though we were kind of inland and it was a good 30 40 minute drive to the coast the seagulls still came back even though that would have been generational kind of data wonder, passed on down through seagulls. I wonder why that is. I wonder if there's like a sense or smell they can smell or if it was just genetically passed down as like this is where all the food Yeah, they were like, hey, we used to go here for a snack. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Wow. So again, not yeah. a great anyway. solution for garbage and landfills, but better than what we currently have, no. which is horrible and destroying communities. And like, I mean, like. I've, you, do you want to know my solution? Yeah, please. Hand cup in. So we should only be allowed to eat things and bring things from the supermarket that we can cap our hands with. Like, hey, uh, I'd like some Coca-Cola. And they just pour it in your hands. And you're just going to try and drink it or run home with it. And then there's no waste. I like that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, hand, hand cupping. cupping. <laughs> Hello, I'd like some baked beans. <laughs> Would you like some Coca-Cola with that? Yes, please. There's like, yeah, just people running down the street dripping. As they go. <laughs> one hand, of, one hand with baked beans, the other hand with Coca Cola. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. it's a great idea, Reese. I love it. No more landfills. Hand cupping. <laughs> no more landfills. Hand cupping. How to, my, how to save the world? Yes, I will be the president of the Green Party. Thank you. <laughs> Come around, children. Let me tell you how I saved the world. (laughs) Go. Cup some soda from the fountain and lap at it like a dog from your hands while I tell you the story.
You don't use any products, Uncle Reese? No products? None. None whatsoever. <laughs> Not even toilet paper? No. Excuse me while I go to the bathroom no. and handcuff my way out to freedom. Incredible freedom. <laughs> Hi. Do you know what? Best way to best way to saves water, saves everything. Like a, a high pressure air compressor, just to blast your, your, the high um, pressured air ring after you have been to the just like high pressure just to clean blast the shit all over the place. Just that's a great idea. No, just down the bowl. You blast it away. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, because everyone's got great aim holding a new pneumatic air gun behind them onto their ass. Exactly. Yeah. Well, be, ca- be careful or you're going to inflate yourself like a tire. <laughs> I, have all, I have all the answers. I have all you're the answers. doing it wrong. <laughs> cool. Well, this has been fun. Um, <laughs> in, con- in, in conclusion, mm. people Don't be are still dick. dealing with People are still dealing with the shitty segregation of the past in their day-to-day lives, yep. and uh, no one, no one's willing to stick their head up and do anything about it. With who can? So, um, yeah, well done, well done, Nova Scotia. See, that would be. I wonder. So that's interesting. I don't know anything about um, the the politics, but, uh, the, the concept of like buying garbage from a municipality. I know it's possible. I know you can do it, and they will pay you to take garbage away. What if these tree crowdfund to buy a ton of garbage from New Brunswick and then use it to buy land and then build parks and build farmland? Fuck it. Build farmland, build better farmland in these. No, no, you can't. You can't. The first house me and my wife bought and she is real. Um, was um, <laughs> I, to meet her. A, I don't believe a, believe this at all. <laughs> this uh, is some very, very convincing from? Photoshop. Where did the kids come from? I haven't met them either. <laughs> so, anyway, um, Reese's imaginary family, the, um, all AI based. My first house, new, new, new home built, um, didn't need a deposit. Tony Blair's socialist kind of center left leaning government help first time buyers help government help, but help buy homes without deposits. If you couldn't afford to save up for one. Amazing. And, um, we, um, uh, we couldn't grow vegetables because it was a an old paint factory was and there were so many dangerous chemicals in the ground we weren't allowed to oh, wow. plant anything in the ground that we planned to eat so wow that's it's quite common quite common in the uk <laughs> oh yeah they call it brownfield sites where they take old factories and landfills they flatten there and they build houses on there and they go hey you could live here just just be a little bit careful what you eat off the ground wow Fuck, this world disappoints me in so many levels. Just like <laughs> so, so, so many levels. So what I'll do is I can't find the link now, but I'll put in the show notes a link to a, a community petition that they've got um, to try and essentially uh, uh, get the government to change their policy on the landfill for the people of Lincolnville. That's a great idea. And if you yeah. want to learn more about uh, this community, Reese has his own uh, like limited series podcast not, not this, that he produced. Not this community. Africville was a different community. Oh, was that? Okay. Yeah, I thought that's yeah. that we were talking about Africville. If you, uh, if you search okay. Africville forever, where you get your, wherever you get your podcasts, you'll learn all about the environmental racism of Nova Scotia in the 20th and bleeding into the 21st century. That's what you want to hear about on a podcast, a comedy podcast. More really, really, really depressing shit. But then I, I did bring it up, so it's on me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Education. Bye, Yay. Bye. 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 <laughs>